What's up guys? So today in this video I wanted to talk about a topic known as centralization versus decentralization and that's really going to be relatable to you and your information systems and how you interact with data and how others interact with your systems. And so if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we help business owners optimize their information systems. So that's in stuff like Airtable, Asana, Slack, and then automating a lot of processes with Zapier or Integramat. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get into the video now. So centralization versus decentralization, and it's kind of intuitive, like the more central you get versus the more expanded you get is a common concept in edge analytics. And it's actually the whole principle of edge analytics, uh, edge artificial intelligence, not analytics. But the what edge artificial intelligence is, is it's pushing it all the way out to the edge. So it's pushing it out. So that's decentral decentralization versus if you did everything in your core team and you guys did everything, no automation, you guys filled out forms for customers, you guys did everything for everybody, that would be a very centralized process. A very centralized process usually looks like it's like very high touch, very personalized for everybody. And it's a lot of manual labor, a lot of manual processes versus pushing it out. So when I think about decentralization, if I had to pick decentralization versus centralization, I would try to design my systems in a decentralized manner. And the benefits of being decentralized are you have lower operating costs. So if you have a decentralized information system where everything's happening outside of your bubble, like your team's bubble, you're not gonna have to have as big of a bubble. If you had everything in the middle, in the center, you'd have to have a really big bubble that's really, really engaged uh, in your bubble. But if you can push stuff out to the edge, out to like using the concept from edge artificial intelligence, if you can push the computing power, everything out to the edge and make other people do work, then you can set up paths. So like roads or like, you can use like, think of it like, you have like somebody in California and the path is like you're using USPS or FedEx or Amazon to get that to you. So you can do a lot of automation and have other people, other softwares work for you to get that stuff from the edge to you rather than maybe like half decentralized, centralized. I know this is very conceptual, but like if you were in the center and somebody was all the way up at the edge, but you're still like almost at the edge in the middle a quarter of the way there and at the center too, that's not very decentralized as much as you would want it. And the reason is because there's a lot of computing that goes on in between all of those steps. So what those steps look like is using Zapier automation. So in a remote business and a remote team that is mostly based online or at least their marketing lead gen, that kind of stuff is based online or they at least have a website and they have some information systems built in Airtable or any app with an API, you can do a lot of that where you push the forms, you push the marketing, you push that stuff to where it's all the way out at the edge. And then everything gets automated through API workflow automation with like Zapier. Everything gets automated into a very centralized like dashboard, a dashboard or a database an Airtable where you can view the information and that information is already formatted the way you want it. It's summarized in the way you want it because it comes all the way out from the edge, goes through workflows and everything, and then it just gets automated right to your central hub, your database, your dashboard, whatever that is, so that you can view it, you can use it to make better decisions. So using something like Zapier in between there, that's gonna save you a lot of time. It's also gonna save you a lot of costs. And those people that you might be using along the way, or if you're like decentralized, the people that you're using to like copy and paste the data and to transfer information from here to, from one software to another software, that's not the best use of their time. And rather than thinking like, oh, automation is gonna like cancel all their jobs, you can have them do more, like more involved tasks. You can give them more responsibility and maybe I'll give them some more creative tasks rather than like copying and pasting data from all the way out here to like right here, formatting it here, bringing it in here to our 
dashboard, then connecting it here to our main dashboard and all of that. So using workflow automation to automate all the steps in between, you can become very decentralized, which has, again, the lower costs. You have less management that you would have to do over those processes. Computers typically don't make user or they don't make errors. So any error that's in between there would have happened either way because it would have been all the way out of the user. And while you might not catch it, you, the computer will only catch it when it's actually wrong rather than having to like go line by line to see what are all the things that are not going right in this process manually, the computer will catch those and then you'll only have to look at the errors. So that's a little bit on the error handling. So there's a ton less errors in it, lower cost, lower staff costs specifically. And like, as far as data redundancy, a lot of times when you're like, so data redundancy is a, it's a concept of like, you have the same data in multiple places or you have a lot of duplicate data. So using API automations, you can really reduce the duplicate data, the, the data redundancy in your databases and your information systems by using some of those APIs like in Zapier to instead of just create everything brand new, find to see if it already exists and then create it if it does not. So an example of pushing it out to the edge, the first one that comes to my mind is using Calendly to book systems, so to book appointments. So on my website, there's a Calendly, there's a like Calendly widget in there and you can go in there and click and request a consultation from me. You actually just book it into my calendar and then that shows up on my calendar. Now that's all the way out on the edge. So like in this video, which is I also consider the edge of my marketing because YouTube will work for me with SEO. YouTube will just work for me like they're evergreen videos. And so everything is out on the edge and I don't have, to, after I post this video, I want to maintain it. And people might go to the Calendly page, which I don't have to maintain. I might add stuff to the website, but I don't have to like sit there and check to see if somebody booked a call with me because once somebody books a call with me, I'll get a notification in my email or in my Slack. So I, I choose Slack, but you could do email. It adds it to my Airtable CRM. And so it adds all the questions that are added on there into my CRM. It also automatically adds a Google, a Google Calendar event with the Zoom link already in there. So it creates a Zoom event as well as a Google Calendar event and then sends it to the person who requested as well as myself. So we can both see it and if someone cancels, that's taken care of with the automations as well. So that's just an example of everything there is decentralized. So like somebody else fills out the questions and they fill out or they pick the time. And then everything in between that and my dashboard is automated. So that's the first example. Another one is e-signature automations. I know that's a big headache for a lot of business owners, like uh, emailing back and forth, trying to get something signed, some reminder emails. So if you can have like, so for example, if you're signing like a e-signature for a client or you're trying to get them to sign it right before they hire you, if you're using something like the automation to get their information from the Calendly in, you already have them in your CRM. So if you could just check a button and then send that out to the edge, then you're in that same process again. So if you can check a button and then go make an information system work for you out here on the edge, so you don't have to do anything. You just get a notification, say maybe 10 days later if they haven't signed it, but they'll get notifications on day, day one, day four, day six, day eight, and day 10. So all of that happens out there. You don't have to even even sign it once you sign it once with something like the e-signature automation after you check the box to send it to them, then it would be all filled out and all they would have to do is click sign and then it would automatically come back to you. And if you're using one of like the three main e-signature softwares like that are out there on the market, uh, especially ones that connect well with Airtable, which I have another video on, then those are gonna be legally binding signatures. And after it's pushed out there to the edge, gets automated back, and then you can check another button and push out your onboarding system to the edge. So then you're, it's not like you're outsourcing your onboarding, but you can have it go out there and create a Slack channel. You can have it go out there and add them to your Asana, go out there and add them to your toggle, which is a time tracking app, so that you don't have to go make these 
projects and make these clients and add these users to all these platforms, as well as send introductory messages. You can just chuck a button and then push it out to the edge. So the edge is basically away from you and your team so that it's not on you guys anymore. Because that's gonna, again, save save time, which saves money. And Zapier is a lot cheaper than paying a person to do the manual tasks, and it's not gonna make any errors. So it'll make sure as long as you set it up right in the beginning, then it's gonna work for the duration of how long you leave that automation on. So I hope that really makes sense on what the centralization versus decentralization is and how I see it affecting remote teams, probably just like yourself if you're watching this, or solopreneurs if you're watching this, then like you're the central hub. And so the more you can push out and then have automate back in when, when it's time for that stuff to automate back in, then I think the more successful you'll be, the more time you'll save, and the more automated your business will be, which I know a lot of people have a stigma against automation, and they might think it's like taking people's jobs or anything, but it's totally not. It's just making people's lives a lot better so that they're not there clicking buttons on like copy and paste and moving stuff here to there. It really saves a lot of time and increases your profitability in your business. So if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy the video in the end screen right in the middle of the screen. It's all about e-signature automation. So if you want something like that set up in your business, you want to decentralize e-signature automation, you can either request a time to talk with me or you can just go click that video and I'll go through my favorite three one, my favorite three e-signature automation platforms. But without further ado, I hope you have a great day. And again, if you want some of this decentralized mindset set up in your business, these workflows, pushing stuff out to the edge, you can request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But again, I highly encourage you to go check out this video in the end screen right here. So I'll see you there.